A full-blown civil war has broken out in the Republican Party. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Let me repeat that. The Republican Party is in civil war. Every member of it will have to decide. Do you really want a party that stands for the Republic and the rule of law, or will you sustain the old system in which Republicans pay lip service to liberty and do nothing against tyranny. Before I explain further, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which depicts Donald J. Trump as the great MAGA king. I make no bones about this. Before I'm through, I'm going to show you why. One more thing. If you can at least appreciate what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now then, I told you all, the day after the midterm election of 2022, that the red wave broke against three seawalls. I'm going to name them again in reverse order. The third seawall is that the souls of much of the electorate is, are in a very dark place. This especially applies to single women who broke for the Democrats in record numbers by a margin of 37% by one account. In August of 2022, Larry Elder summed it up this way, quote, The welfare state has incentivized women to marry the government and men to abandon their financial responsibilities. Unquote Larry Elder. And I have a link in the description to him saying that on his Twitter account. Now that's probably the largest part, but Daniel at UAF Report suggested that leftist women simply do not look, dress, or behave to make themselves attractive. And that is because they do not want to be attractive. That wasn't always the case. In the 60s, leftist women flaunted their attractiveness and said, eat your hearts out, men. No more. Today's leftist woman is bitter and spiteful, and it shows. Inez Stepman warned everyone of what that could mean. Quote, we have to reckon with this as a political force. On the right, we love to mock and complain about that. But millennials will have the highest proportion of unmarried and childless childless women hitting 40, and they will vote to ruin your life, unquote Inez Stepman. I have a link in the description to her tweet saying that and quoting Brad Wilcox's tweet saying who broke where among married men and women and single men and women. Every demographic except the single women broke for Republicans. The single women broke, broke Democratic. And that age of 40 is significant. That's when, on average, they can't have children anymore if they haven't already. Dr. Steve Turley likes to say, well, that's okay, because the next batch of children will be with us. But first, we have to make sure that those children will even be allowed to be conceived, much less born. That's why I oppose psychological, physiological, and surgical experimentation on children. Those experiments always leave them sterile. And that's the idea. For the second seawall, I named incompetency or fraud at the polls. And at this moment, many are casting a jaundiced eye on the very slow vote counting on the west coast of the United States. Arizona also saw the worst example of incompetence in Maricopa County. Almost as bad was an incident in Malapan the township in New Jersey. An officer of election there removed two universal serial bus flash drives from two tabulators before all results had downloaded. A judge has now ordered both machines unsealed to correct this. Now remember, 
I am a paid officer of election, and I can tell you, in my jurisdiction, we run the tape. That is, we get a printed summary of results. The precinct chief then calls this in. Out of sheer practicality, no one can make a mistake like that. But the first stone, the seawall I named, was Republican complacency. In this regard, you got to ask yourself, what about those allegations of orchestrated irregularities in 2020 and, uh, and this year? Now, just a minute here. Why didn't these affect Brian Kemp in Georgia? Why didn't Stacey Abrams, who financed a temp agency that supplied OOEs to Fulton County, Georgia, pull off another stunt like the one alleged against her in the State Farm Arena in Atlanta? I have a link in the description to a tweet by the Epoch Times embedding a snippet of surveillance footage. You see the OOEs. They've told all the poll watchers and reporters, go home. You're not going to be counting votes anymore. It's, all, it's over. And then suddenly they reached under desks or under black draped tables for what looked like their official supply carry cases, or suitcases, as we OOEs call them. What was in those suitcases? Well, I asked my own registrar about that last year when I went for training, and she didn't have a clue as to what legitimate activity they could have been about. So watch the footage for yourselves and see if you can figure out what those people were doing. Remember, they were all temps from Happy Faces Temps in Atlanta. Now, Stacey Abrams doesn't own Happy Faces Temps, but she financed them. Never Trumper Eric Woods Erickson tried to explain it away, and I'll tell you right now, he didn't do a very good job. But whatever you think about what those OOEs were doing in 2020, wrap your minds around this. This year, midterms 2022, Democrats spent $200 million on the Georgia and Texas governor's races, money they wasted. For that amount of money, they could have done it again, and they didn't even try. Now, either they didn't really do it the first time, despite what the surveillance footage might or might not show, or Sex State Riff Raff Raffensperger wouldn't let them do it this time. They had the same apparatus, but this year, somebody told them, don't even think about it. Yes, Georgia has passed a few more laws, but hey, these were the officers of election. If anybody could have gotten away with it, they could. And they could have done those things the same way. But they didn't. I've never heard one peep saying they even tried. And you never saw an election counted any faster. And Stacey Abrams conceded defeat. But, but the big trouble happened in jurisdictions where Republicans ran definite patriotic and nationalist populist candidates. Carrie Lake and Blake Masters in Arizona are the obvious victims, although late coming votes might still help them catch up. Lauren Beaver in California, uh, Colorado has gone from behind to leading by 1,100 votes, a lead she's held for, for uh, just more than a day by now. Adam Lexalt has, had, has the lead and he's holding it, but again, votes seem very slow to count. The difference could come down to this. Brian Kemp, and Texas Greg Abbott are Republicans in name only. Rhinos. Carrie Lake, Blake Masters, Lauren Biebert, and maybe Adam Laxalt are the real deal. So they have to go. Though whether they will is still open. So the first seawall turns out to be the strongest, and maybe even part of the second. If the Republicans were all on the same page, that seawall would not have existed, the second would not have held, and the red wave would have easily swept down the third. So, who's on which side? On the rhino side, which some call the uni party, meaning a union of the Republican establishment and the Democrats, we have former House Speaker Paul Ryan, who openly says Trump is a drag on all candidates. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, who now claims without foundation that Trump is reevaluating any 2024 plans. Minority leaders Kevin McCarthy in the House and Mitch McConnell in the Senate. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The Wall Street Journal, News Corp, which means Fox News Channel, and the New York Post. Eric Woods Erickson, who's now telling Republicans to move on from Trump. 
and Governor and Lieutenant Governor Glenn Youngkin and Winsome Sears right here in Virginia. I have a link in the description to Winsome Sears saying she just can't endorse Trump for 2024 and tweets from three more people saying much the same. On the real Republican side, we have Donald Trump himself, of course, Lauren Biebert, Carrie Lake, Blake Masters, maybe Adam Laxalt, and Trump very much wants that man to win. We also have Laura Loomer, Nick Fuentes, Lauren Waitsky, Sidney Powell, Jack Posobiec, Sarah A. Carter, Jenna Ellis, and Rudy Giuliani, among others. Ron DeSantis, as of this moment, has not declared which side he is on. Without a doubt, the rhinos prefer him to Trump. The doubt is where DeSantis' loyalties lie. Now, Donald Trump definitely doubts Ron DeSantis' loyalty. He started by calling him DeSanctimonious on the Saturday before midterms. I have a link to the description to a video catching Trump saying that yesterday, Trump made his strongest statement yet in a series of truths on Truth Social. These truths are visible only to account holders. But the first TV has the full statement. But before I read it, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You're not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and the unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me, many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by uh, connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides. Either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com. Learn how you can build a legacy for your future. And now, here is the full statement of Donald J. Trump on his site, Truth Social. Quote, News Corp, which is Fox, the Wall Street Journal, and the no longer great New York Post bring back call, whoever he is, is all in for Governor Ron DeSanctimonious, an average Republican governor with great public relations who didn't have to close up his state, but he did, unlike other Republican governors whose overall numbers for a Republican were just average, middle of the pack, including the virus that shall remain nameless, and who has the advantage of sunshine, where people from badly run states up north would go no matter who the governor was, just as I did. Ron came to me in desperate shape in 2017. He was politically dead, losing in a landslide, to a very good agricultural commissioner, Adam Putnam, who was loaded up with cash and great poll numbers. Ron had low approval, had, uh, bad polls, no money, but he said that if I would endorse him, he could win. I didn't know Adam, so I said, let's give it a shot, Ron. When I endorsed him, it was as though, to use a bad term, a nuclear weapon went off. Years later, they were the exact words that Adam Putnam used in describing Ron's endorsement. He said, quote, I went from having it made with no competition to immediately getting absolutely clobbered after your endorsement, close quote, unquote, Adam Putnam. I then got Ron by the star of the Democratic Party, Andrew Gillum, who was later revealed to be uh, well, addicted to cocaine by having two massive rallies with tens of thousands of people at each one. I also fixed his campaign, which had completely fallen apart. I was all in for Ron, and he beat Gillum. But after the race, 
when votes were being stolen by the corrupt election process in Broward County and Ron was going down 10,000 votes a day, along with now Senator Rick Scott, I sent in the FBI and the U.S. attorneys and the ballot theft immediately ended just prior to them running out of the votes necessary to win. I stopped his election from being stolen. And now, Ron DeSanctimonious is playing games. The fake news asks him if he's going to run if President Trump runs, and he says, quote, I'm only focused on the governor's race. I'm not looking into the future, close quote. Well, in terms of loyalty and class, that's really not the right answer. This is just like 2015 and 2016, a media assault, collusion, when Fox News fought me to the end until I won, and then they couldn't have been nicer or more supportive. The Wall Street Journal loved low-energy Jeb Bush and a succession of other people as they rapidly disappeared from sight, finally falling in line with me after I easily knocked them out one by one. We're in exactly the same position now. They will keep coming after us, MAGA, but ultimately, we will win. Put America first and make America great again, unquote Donald J. Trump. And now the $1,024,000 question. Who's telling the truth and who's lying? The Republican establishment is going to dismiss that statement I just read to you as self-serving, but let's lay out some other truth claims that people can check out. Trump claims 219 victories and 16 defeats for his endorsees. Everyone else is saying Trump's endorsees were losing all over the place, and everyone else's endorsees won. Is that so? Andrew White of Valiant News made this blistering assessment of Glenn Youngkin's endorsees. White says most of Youngkin's Virginia endorsees lost. They included Yesley Vega in the 7th District and Hung Kao in the 10th. Nationwide, he has only four clear victories and two, Blake and Masters in, uh, uh, Blake and, uh, Lake and Blake in Arizona, that could go either way. Out of 15 endorsements, some Democrat wags already referred to the curse of the red vest, referring to Youngen's sartorial trademark. I have a link in the description to a tweet by one Marcus Simon that has two pictures, each featuring Glenn Youngkin wearing a red vest, standing next to a candidate. Now let's see here, we have Karina Lipsman, who ran for Congress in Virginia's 8th District, and New York Representative Lee Zeldin. Both lost! L-O-S-T, lost! So don't talk to me about Glenn Youngkin's being some kind of powerhouse! And by the way, Andrew White stands by Trump's truth claim about his endorsements and victories. And furthermore, Laura Loomer says that she is the source. Neither has Trump contradicted that statement. Ron DeSantis made a horrible blunder by endorsing, endorsing Joe O'Day in Colorado. And not only is O'Day a never-Trumper, but he campaigned in favor of a row-like regime. Now, clearly, he deserved to lose. Why wouldn't Democrats vote for the one who wears the label with pride? Furthermore, Trump pointed out that DeSantis underperformed Trump in Florida. Trump claims 5.7 million votes in 2020. DeSantis finished with 4.6 million. Yes, it was enough to win. Yes, he also outperformed himself from 2018. Hey, it should have been more. And anyone who doubts these figures, leave a comment. A writer calling himself Sundance at The Last Refuge explains the Republican Civil War in stark terms. It started with Scott Brown taking the Ted Kennedy seat by winning a special Senate election in Massachusetts in 2009. Now, that alone is why Obama had to introduce the Senate version of Obamacare as an amendment in nature of a substitution in the House of Representatives uh, uh, just to get something passed. Brown's victory cost the Democrats their Senate control at exactly the wrong time. But the Republican establishment were not pleased. 
So they ran Mitt Romney in 2012 to lose, which he did as they planned. Then Donald Trump took that famous walk down the escalator in the Trump Tower lobby. The Sundance Report mirrors exactly Trump's own statement at Truth Social. The Sundance also accuses McConnell and other establishment figures of sabotaging Trump at every turn. And again, this mirrors Trump in another, another truth, accusing McConnell and then Speaker Ryan for the first time of falling down on their job. They weren't able to get me the funds for the border wall. Trump, uh, Trump, uh, found, uh, Trump found other funds, uh, funds, and then, uh, and the wall was built all right, and then, and then Joe Biden won an election that uh, may, maybe was good, maybe was, uh, wasn't. I have other things to th think about that. Uh, that, uh, uh, that, and then what does he do? When he gets into office, he signs an executive order telling the wall contractors to down tools and go home. So there, you, so there you go. I think now you know who's lying. Uh, lying. It's the Republican establishment. I mean, they're even going around saying that. Uh, that Trump uh, that Trump actually uh, was blaming his wife for suggesting the endorsement of Mehmet Oz. Now I'll allow that Mehmet Oz was a mistake for another reason. He just wasn't that good a campaigner. I mean, never mind of being a transplant in New Jersey, and he just—I mean, if he was mispronouncing people's names, he needed to learn. But he didn't. But. Trump has since denied, uh, denied blaming his wife, uh, wife, and I believe him. And then, and look at Mitch McConnell, not supporting Blake Masters in Arizona. Now what's that all about? I'll tell you what that's about. He would rather still be minority leader than to have a new MAGA caucus backbench him, as we already hear of people thinking need to, needs to happen. So, as I said, we know who's lying. The Republican establishment has lied and is lying about who deserves blame for their underperformance this midterm. So, you're going to assume that they are lying about everything else, including their commitment to individual liberty and the rule of law. And I'll tell you something else. I have another theory on how a man like Joe Biden could win a presidential election while staying in his basement. The Republican establishment sabotaged Trump. They betrayed him from within. Now that goes for the bad advice he got relating to the virus that shall remain nameless and the decision not to hold any rallies of his own in 2020. Laura Loomer, from her Telegram channel, to which I've also left a link in the description, has begun the first strikes. She takes note of who is supporting DeSantis. What a rogues gallery this is. Now let's see, you have the Lincoln Project which began in 2019 with the aim of defeating Trump and all of his allies. You have Trevor Noah of The Daily Show, Ken Griffin, who bankrolled Mitt Romney's losing campaign, and Ronna McDaniel, the chairman of the Republican National Committee, who may or may not be Mitt Romney's niece. Laura Luma says that she is, Ms. McDaniel denies it, but after all the other things those establishment people have lied about, who knows? Loomer has criticized Ron DeSantis' proposal of anti-censorship laws that go nowhere. The courts, struck, the 11th Circuit struck them down. Well, in sharp contrast, Texas passed an anti-censorship law that the 5th Circuit upheld. Loomer has also threatened to make miserable the lives of anyone who supports Kevin McCarthy becoming the next Speaker of the House. Again, Ron DeSantis himself has said nothing so far, but Loomer notes that he refused to act on her complaints about her losing her primary and has acted against another Trump ally, Nick Fuentes, who is also one of Laura Loomer's friends. The Trump side will have a slightly better Senate Republican conference. Several House races remain to call, and after that, the 2024 primary campaign 
begins in earnest. Link in the description of the article to Larry Elder talking about single women marrying the government, to Inez Stepman talking about how they're going to vote to ruin your life after they've ruined theirs, uh, their own, to that Epoch Times tweet about the surveillance footage, again, read, uh, read it for yourselves to decide what it shows, to Winsome Sears and three other people saying why we can't have Trump anymore, to the video where Trump first called DeSantis De sanctimonious, to the curse of the red velvet, uh, red vest tweet, to Laura Louver's Telegram channel, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to OurSilverLives.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to videos I've already done so far after this election. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.